So if you had this relationship, right, then the k, the solution vector, was considered an eigenvector. And that little lambda that made this true was called the eigenvalue, okay? There's another way to write this. What I could do is I could subtract that term over, and then I would get the zero vector, which usually we use like bold print, so you like really, really make it dark, right? Because <laughs> it's, a, it's a vector, not um, a number zero, okay? And then another thing you could do is you could even rewrite this as, and it's gonna look really, really weird, but you could write it as a minus delta i k equal to the number zero. So this is a vector zero, and it can be written like this. Actually, no, this is still the vector zero. But if you take the determinant of this weird looking vector, you should be able to get the number zero. This equation here, when you take the determinant of a minus lambda i times k is called the characteristic equation, which is kind of like our auxiliary equation back when we were doing the DEs, okay? So it's just some other equation that will help us to identify the solutions, okay? Um, this equation is what you're going to use to first find the eigenvalues. Then you're going to use those eigenvalues to find the corresponding eigenvectors because each eigenvector is going to have its own little lambda. Okay. Um, every now and then you might get you might get one lambda and two eigenvectors, but we'll talk about that eventually. Okay. So this is going to be the characteristic. It says the eigenvalues. which are the lambdas, okay, are the roots or solutions of this equation. The eigenvectors, the k's, can be found by solving the matrix part equal to zero. Again, these are matrix, matrices, okay? So you've got two different kind of things going on here. This is our strategy to finding the eigenvalues first. Once I know that eigenvalue, then I can solve this to figure out what the K is that belongs to it, okay? So let me give you one example first, something that's not so complicated. So here we have A, and the directions are they want us to find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors for this particular matrix. So back before we were doing things like this, right? We're given this, we don't even know what that is at all, okay? And we don't need it because we can still find all the solutions. It's very weird. So the first thing we're gonna do is the determinant of A minus um, lambda I. And I made a mistake, there shouldn't be no K here because you're gonna be finding those Ks. Now make sure, I'm gonna do this once, and that's it, just once, okay? The rest of the time, I'm not going to write this step out. I don't even write it on my notes. But I just want you to see where, how I'm shortcutting it, okay? This thing means lambda times this, right? And if I multiply lambda to each one of those um, 
things, I'm going to get lambda, still 0, 0, and then lambda, right? So when I go to figure out what a minus lambda i is, I'm basically taking this component and subtracting the lambda, taking this component, subtracting the 0, taking the 16, subtracting the 0, and taking 0 and subtracting the lambda, right? Component by component, subtracting. So what I end up with is just negative 8 minus lambda, minus 1, 16, and then 0 minus lambda, which is negative lambda. But normally, I don't write all of that down. I just do this. Essentially, the shortcut is, is all the diagonals are going to get a minus lambda, right? That's what's going to end up happening. Because in the identity matrix, only the diagonal part of the matrix has values in it. Okay? So when I do the next problem, I'm going to shortcut just by subtracting lambda from all the diagonal components. Okay? But I have to take the determinant of this. In order for me to figure out what that lambda is, I have to take the determinant of this matrix. Well, if I do the determinant of it, I'm going to get negative 8 minus lambda times negative lambda minus 16 times negative 1, which is positive 8 lambda plus lambda squared plus 16. So then, if I want to find the lambdas, I have to set this thing equal to zero. If I set that equation equal to zero, how would you solve it? Could you factor this one? Mm -hmm. It'd be lambda plus four and lambda plus four or lambda plus 4 squared, which means you get lambda equal to what? Negative 4. Negative 4. Now, this negative 4 is repeated, right? How many times? Twice. Twice. For right now, we don't care. But later, when I have to find, later when we get to chapter 10, it will matter that it repeats. Okay? But for right now, we don't care if it repeats. We just want to know the lambdas, and then we're going to find all the k's for all the different lambdas. We don't do anything with them when they're the same. So then, okay, I found a lambda. I only have one lambda. I need to find the k vector that goes with it, okay? How am I going to do that? I need to solve this equation, a minus lambda i equal to zero. I now know what the lambda is. So a minus negative 4i, which is the same thing as saying a plus 4i, right? And we already talked about how do we add something like that? All it means is that the identity vector or the identity matrix has ones, right, in the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So when I multiply it by fours, I'm imagining fours in all the diagonals and then zeros everywhere else. So when I add that to A, essentially all you're going to end up doing is adding four to all of the diagonal components. So what that means is that if I go back up here, the way I do it is I just plug in a negative four. But when you plug in a negative four, what is that minus going to make that negative four do? it's going to turn into plus 4, right? Which is exactly what I have right here. So what is negative 8 plus 4? Negative 4. Negative 4. This component stays the same. This component stays the same. What do you get if you plug in negative 4 in there? Positive 4. Positive 4. And remember, I said that that 0 was a matrix, right? This 0 here. So I need to put two zeros because I have two lines. And then we solve these the last class. First thing is to make this guy a 1, right? So we're going to multiply by negative 1 fourth. 
And so then I get 1, 1 fourth, and 0. How do I make this guy 0? Mm -hmm. So then I get negative 16, negative 4, and 0, and then 16, 4, and 0. So when I add these together, I get a bunch of zeros, don't I? Now, we talked about what happens when you get all zeros at the bottom. What does that mean? How many solutions are there then? Is it one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions? Okay. Infinitely many, because zero always equals zero, right? So if you want to pick the correct one, because it is infinitely many solutions, but these solutions all have to fit a certain relationship, right? We talked about that. If you want to pick the exact vector that's in the back of the book, I'm going to give you the strategy, okay? First, you got to turn this into little variables, little k's, because you're trying to find the big k, right? So big k is going to consist of one k and another little k, right? We need to know what those numbers should be. What they will do is they'll first identify the relationship that these guys have with one another, and that can be found using the top equation. This means 1k1 plus 1 fourth k2 will equal zero. And if I solve for k1, I get that k1 equals negative 1 fourth k2, right? Okay, the strategy that the book will do is once they have this relationship here, they'll take this guy over there. Not the one that's by himself, but the other one. Okay, first they'll try to let it equal zero. Then if they can't let it equal zero, they'll try to get rid of fractions if you have them. If you don't have fractions, then they just let k equal, that value equal one. So those are the three options. It's zero first, try it. If zero doesn't work, then you can't use it. Then try to get rid of your fractions if you have them. And if you don't have fractions, just use one. Okay, that's if you want to match the back of the book. Of course, you could pick whatever in the heck you wanted, right? As long as it has that relationship, it's correct. Okay, but if you want everything to match what's in the back of the book, that's the strategy you need to go through. Okay, so if I were to let k2 equal 0, once I multiply these together, what would k1 also be? Zero. And can k have a 0 and a 0? No, because by definition, an eigenvector was a non-zero vector, right? So we can't let k2 equal zero. Is there something I could let k2 equal so that there wasn't a fraction anymore? What is the hint? What number should I pick so that there's no more fraction? Four. Four, and why four? because it's in the bottom, right? So in that second option, if you can't choose zero, pick the denominator, right? Use that. So we're going to say let k2 equal 4. Then what that means is k1 will be negative 1 fourth times 4, which is what? Negative. negative 1. So then what that means is my eigenvector is going to be negative 1 for k1 and 4 for k2. Okay, so I found the lambda and I found the eigenvector that goes with it. And it's important because when you look in the back of the book, here I only got one eigenvalue. But what happens if I get like five eigen, and that's not going to happen, maybe two or three. <laughs> if I get two or three eigenvalues, then I'm going to have two or three k's, right? And so you need to make sure you remember which k goes with the, which lambda, okay? So that's just the beginning one because it's the first one that we're seeing. So I didn't want to make it too hard and put a whole bunch of them in there. Just one, okay? But now, of course, we have to step it up, right? So we're going to go ahead and go in 
and try another one and we might get more than one lambda. So here's example two. I'm not gonna give you a three by three just yet, although that will come. So first we need to figure out what the determinant of A minus lambda I looks like, okay? That means the determinant of what? How do I calculate this, the shortcut? What's gonna happen when I subtract lambda times the identity? Who really gets subtracted with the lambda? Just the diagonals. So it's just gonna be negative one minus lambda and eight minus lambda. Those are the only guys that are gonna end up getting a minus lambda. The other people are just gonna stay exactly the same, okay? But I haven't done the determinant yet. All I've done is said what this looks like, right? In order for me to do the determinant, I have to do the cross multiplying part. So this times this minus this times this, right? And in order for me to find the lambdas, I have to set that equal to zero. So then I have negative eight, positive lambda, positive eight lambda, positive lambda squared, and a positive 14. Let me put it in order so that I can actually see this. Ah, uh, yes. That would make a big difference. So then that means this is going to be negative 7. Ah, uh, yes, and so now I can factor it. Then what does this factor into? Bless you. Am I going to use 2 and 3 or 6 and 1? How am I going to get 7? Mm -hmm. Oh, I did them backwards, but yes, <laughs> you are correct. So then what does that mean? That means lambda equals what? If I set each one of these guys equal to zero, what do I get? One and six. So those are the two lambdas, which means if I have two lambdas, how many k's am I going to end up with? Two eigenvectors. Okay, so do one at a time because each one has to be solved with its own matrix. Okay, so what I do is I go back for lambda equal to one. I'm going to shortcut now. I know it's a two by two, so I know I only need two zeros here. I'm going to go back here when I minus the lambdas. And all I'm literally going to do is plug in that one. So what is negative one minus one? Mm -hmm. This guy didn't have a lambda, so it's just going to stay the same. That guy didn't have a lambda, so it's going to stay the same. Now for here, if I plug in 1, I get 8 minus 1, which is what? 7. Seven. And so then this is the matrix I need to solve to figure out what the k's are. Okay. So first step is to get that guy to turn into a 1. So negative 1 half times r1. Then I gotta make this guy zero. So seven times R1 plus R2. That means I'm gonna have seven, negative seven and zero, negative seven, seven and zero. I get the zero, zero, zero again, don't I? It doesn't always happen. But it does happen a lot. <laughs> but it doesn't always happen that you get the zero, zero, zero. So then what does this relationship look like? Remember, these are the little k's for the big k, right? So this is not x1, it's what? It's 1k1 
minus a single K2 equal to zero. And if I move the K2 over, I get this, right? Can I let K2 equal zero? No, because then K1 would also be zero, right? Do I have a fraction I need to get rid of? No, so what's the last thing I should let K2 equal? One. So let K2 equal one, then because they're equal to one another, that means K1 is also one, isn't it? Which means capital K is gonna be one for K1 and one for K2. Make sure you put them in order, right? K1 goes on top, K2 goes on bottom. If you put them in the wrong order, it's not gonna match what's in the back of the book, okay? And this is for lambda equal to one. That's a lot of ones. That's half the problem done, right? Maybe two thirds. <laughs> we had to do the whole thing again, but with lambda equal to what this time? Six, because that was the other guy we found, right? So lambda equal to six now. Now again, I'm gonna go back to this one here with the minus lambdas. That's where I go to get what goes inside this matrix. So this time, lambda is a six. So what is negative one minus six? Negative seven. The two's gonna stay the same. The negative seven's gonna stay the same. And what is eight minus six? So then if I try to make this guy 1, I'm going to have to multiply by negative 1 7th. And when I try to make this guy a 0, I'm going to have to do 7 row 1 plus row 2. That's going to make it 7, negative 2, 0, negative 7, 2, 0. And I get the zero, zero, zero again. So let's write out that relationship. That's one K one minus two sevenths K two equal to zero. Move over the term with the K two. Can I let K two be zero? No, because if I multiply it by that number, that means K1 is also going to be 0, right? And both Ks cannot be 0. It could be possible for one of them to be 0. You just can't have both of them being 0, okay? So we can't use K2 0 because then that would make the other guy 0 as well. Next option is to try to eliminate a fraction. Do I need to eliminate a fraction here? Do I have a fraction there? I do. So what's the denominator? Seven. So I'm going to let K2 equal 7 then. Then that means that K1 would be 2 sevenths times that 7, which means K1 would equal what? 2. two. Which means that the capital K would be what? 2 first and then the 7 and that's for lambda equal to six, okay? In the book, they might, when you have more than one K, they might put a subscript and they might say, this is the first K, right? And this is the second K. But they'll also tell you which lambda it came from. Because what if you had chosen to do all the junk for the six first, and then chose to do all the junk for the, so the subscripts don't really matter. If you called yours K1 and it matches the book's K2, that's okay. It just means they decided to do all this junk first and then they decided to go back and do this one, okay? It doesn't matter which one you do first. Okay, how much harder do we get? Uh, da, 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 da. That's that one. Oh, hey, this is like the stuff I don't like, but it's okay. It's fun, it's just annoying. Okay, so we're not gonna give you a three by three yet. 
we're still sticking with the two by twos. This one's actually easier. I could do it the long way, but I do not want to. And I'll, you'll see why in a second. So first, let's start at the beginning. Determinant of A minus lambda I equal to zero. That means one minus lambda, this guy stays the same, that guy stays the same, and one minus lambda. I have to take the determinant of that and equal it to zero. So I get 1 minus lambda minus lambda plus lambda squared plus 1. Oops. Can this one be factored? No. And if it can't be factored, what's our other alternative? No, nope, there's no fraction, so I don't have to worry about that. Say it again? Uh huh. Well, the quadratic formula, yes. So that means lambda equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a, right? And I'm getting that from these coefficients. Where's my other colors? Here we go. So I'm getting it from a equal to this guy's invisible coefficient, b equal to the negative 2, and then c equal the constant positive 2, right? That's where I got all of those things. And definitely, if you don't have that memorized, write that down and try to get it get it down because you'll need it. I think we had we had to use it for another one too, right? When we were doing the auxiliary equations, we still had to use our quadratic formula. So I think y'all are all okay there. Okay, so let's compute this. What is it going to be? It's going to be positive 2 and that's going to be 4 minus 8 which is negative 4. So 2 plus or minus 2i, and then 2 over 2 plus or minus 2i over 2, which means lambda equals 1 plus 1i. Okay, plus or minus 1i, right? So how many um, lambdas do we have? We have two, we have one plus i, right? And then we also have one minus i, okay? The cool thing about the i's though, is that you don't have to do both. But what sucks is doing one, just one, <laughs> sucks, okay? Because you remember, in order for you to figure out k, you have to stick this inside the matrix, right? And then you have to solve that matrix. And there's going to be a bunch of I's in that matrix, and it's going to be a nightmare, okay? But the good thing is, is I only have to go through the nightmare once, and that's it, okay? Because there is a rule, and I want to write this down, but it says, if lambda equals A plus BI, and corresponds to K1, then for lambda, we'll call this one lambda 1, for the second lambda, A minus BI, the conjugate, right? Um, K2 automatically equals the conjugate of K1. So you only have to find K1, and then you'll automatically have the second one. Okay, so that's what's nice about these, is that we don't have to go through the whole 
solving the matrix part twice. We just have to do it once and then we take the conjugate, okay? Now you have to remember though, when you're taking the conjugate, what is changing signs? Because these guys are conjugates of each other. What changed signs? Did the real part change signs? Only the imaginary part changed signs, right? And that's important because if I get that K1 is like 2 and 0, then K2 is going to look exactly the same, isn't it? Because there's no imaginary parts in there to turn opposite, okay? So be very, very careful because people get in the habit of just changing everything to the opposite and it's not everything. It's only the imaginary parts that are changing signs, okay? So let's go figure out what K1 looks like, right? You have to pick one and you can pick whichever one you want. I usually pick the positive, but you could, you could pick the negative if you wanted to. But I usually pick the plus I. Now be careful because you're going to plug that in here. What happens when you minus two terms? Mm -hmm. So when you put this in there, it's actually going to become minus 1 and minus i, isn't it? So be very careful. If you have to, um, write it out. 1 minus 1 plus i, and then 1 minus 1 plus i. Just if you have to see it, right? Then you know that that minus has to distribute. And so 1 minus 1 is going to give me no real part, right? But I'm still going to end up with the negative i here. Here I have 1. And here again, I'm going to get 1 minus 1, but I'm still going to have that minus i. Now I could try to turn the negative i into a positive 1. Or what else could I do? There's three things you're allowed to do when you're solving matrices. One is multiply any row by a non-zero number. The second is to multiply a row by a non-zero number and then add it to another row. What was the third thing you could do? That's the second one I said. What's the other one you could do? Interchange. Uh -huh. Interchange. I mean, swap them. So if I just swap the top row and the bottom row, won't I have the one where I want it? I don't have to do any magic to it, right? You're just swapping them. So that's what I would have done. You could have turned the negative I into a positive one if you wanted to. It's just harder to do that. And so if I already have a one there, I'm going to swap it. Even if one wasn't a one, even if it was just real, I would have swapped it into that spot, okay? Now, I gotta make the negative i at the bottom a zero. So in order to do that, I'm gonna need a positive i, right? So I'm gonna take positive i times row one plus row two to give me my new row two. So i times this, which is i, i times this, which is negative i squared, but what is negative i squared? It's actually just one. And then i times zero is still zero. Now if I put row two underneath that, what ends up happening? I'm getting all the zeros again, aren't I? So once you have all the zeros, start putting this into its relationship. So I have k1 minus i k2 equal to zero. If I move the second term over, I get k1 equals positive i k2. Can I let k2 equal zero? 
It doesn't matter if it's an I or not. If I multiply it by zero, it's still going to be zero, right? And then I would have both zero, which is bad. Is there a fraction? No. So when I can't use zero because it makes them both zero, and I can't use a f get rid of a fraction, that means you're going to let k2 equal 1. If I let k2 equal 1, then k1 is what? What is i times 1? just i. So then capital K1, because it's the first K vector I'm finding, would be what? I on the top, 1 on the bottom. And then I know by this rule in red here that I automatically have K2. It's going to be the conjugate. If this imaginary part changes sign, it's going to become negative i. Here, there is no imaginary part, so that should stay exactly the same. And then the book will also specify which one goes with which. This one was for lambda equal 1 plus i, which means this one has to be for lambda equal to 1 minus i. I'm trying to squeeze it in there, but let me zoom in so you can see. And on the test, I literally says lambda equals blank. You tell me what lambda you found. And then it says the corresponding K equals, and then it's got the little matrix for you to put in the stuff. Okay. So it's already got the form of how I want the answer on the test itself. So that you don't forget to label which one goes with which. And when does that make sense? Not until December 12th. Mm -hmm. That's not final too? Mm hmm That's it. Okay. Let's see. Are we getting into the three by threes yet? Yes, we are. Okay. This is the same thing. It's just they take longer. So that was example three, we'll do example four. this real quick and we still have one if I don't count this next class because that's like a just extra one I have one class to do the lecture on chapter 10 and that's the 19th then we have um, Thursday the 21st to practice and then we have Tuesday the 26th to practice, the 28th is Thanksgiving, right? And then that following week, I'm just going to have you turn in your homework, and we're going to do more practice, and then we're going to start studying for the final review. So there's going to be lots of days for practice, okay? Just to make sure that we're good before we keep going with that test, okay? Okay, so this is a three by three, and we have to do the same thing. We have to figure out what the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero looks like. So remember, I do have to take the determinant. I don't do it all in one step. I just figure out what I'm going to take the determinant of first. So remember what the minus lambda i does. It minuses a lambda, but only from the diagonal components. So this guy will have a minus lambda this guy will have a minus lambda and then the zero will have a minus lambda only the diagonals will get the minus lambda now when I go to do the determinant I'm gonna move this over just because I need some space for my strategy right our strategy on determinants of three by threes was to multiply the first two rows over here not multiply but rewrite them 
and then to start doing all the multiplication, okay? So if I go in this direction, I end up with 5 minus lambda, negative 5 minus lambda, and negative lambda. Then if I keep going in that direction, I get plus a negative 45. Plus, if I do these three, I just get zero. Now I've got to go in the other direction. This only has two, so I'm not doing that row, that diagonal. This one has three. So it's going to be minus five times negative five minus lambda minus negative nine times five minus lambda minus what? What is it? Zero. And it's supposed to equal zero, but I ran out of room over there. Which one? Ah, this one should be zero, right? Also, then I do have room. Good catch. This times this times this, right? Should have been zero. Good, good, good. But this one did have all three. That one in there. And now I can fit my equal zero over here. So let's see what we have. Normally, if I don't have this constant there, and each term has something in common, I don't have to multiply everything out. I could just factor out what they all have in common and then only mess with the rest of it. But unfortunately, this term right here doesn't have a five minus lambda like these two terms, right? So what that means is unfortunately, I have to multiply everything all out, okay? And then I can factor it. So if I multiply this out, um, that's gonna be negative 25, minus 5 lambda plus 5 lambda plus lambda squared and I just combine my double signs for the rest of it. Then now I'm going to distribute this negative lambda actually those are going to go away. So I get 25 lambda positive minus lambda cubed minus 45 plus 45 minus 9 lambda. These guys go away too. I get, what is that, 16 lambda minus lambda cubed. Can I factor that? I could factor first a common factor, right? And then I have a difference of two squares. So I can do four plus lambda and four minus lambda, and I'll get 16 minus lambda squared, right? So how many lambdas do I have here then? What's the first one? Mm -hmm. What's the second lambda going to be? Mm -hmm. And then what's the third lambda going to be? Positive four. Positive 4. So I've got three lambdas, which means I need to solve three 3 by 3 matrices. This is why these are ugly. <laughs> you have them on the homework. I don't know if I do that to you on the test. I have to go look. Okay, so let's start with the first one. For lambda equal to zero. So I'm going to do a minus lambda i, my bar is zero. So I go back up to the one right here that has all the minus lambdas in it, right? And that's where I plug in the zero. So if you plug in zero for all of these lambdas, 
it's basically going to stay the original function, the original matrix, isn't it? Because 5 minus 0 is still 5. This is negative 1 and 0. 0, negative 5 minus 0 is negative 5. And then finally at the bottom, you have 5, negative 1, and negative 0 is just 0. And the right-hand side has to be a bunch of zeros because this is the zero matrix, right? So then how do I make the top? I got to make the one, right? So one fifth times row one, I get one, negative one fifth, zero, and zero. Now the second spot is already a zero. So I don't need to do anything for that. But I do need to make this five a zero. So I'm gonna have to take negative five times row one plus row three to get me my new row three. So that would be negative five, positive one, zero, zero. And row three is here and I get a bunch of zeros again. Oops, not five. I got a bunch of zeros, right? You can stop here it's just when you get the equations, you're going to have to manipulate them a little bit, okay? So if I go to the next step and I put these in little k's, I have three columns now, right? Which means I'm going to have a little k1, a little k2, and a little k3. So the top equation tells me that I'm going to have 1 k1 minus 1 fifth k2, 0 k3s, equal to zero. The next row tells me I have zero K1s, negative five K2s, and then plus nine K3s. If I were to take the top one like I normally did, right, I would get K1 equal to one fifth K2. Since K1 is in terms of K2, it's also possible to get K3 in terms of K2, right? So if I do that, I'm going to have 9K3 equal to 5K2. Then I'm going to have K3 equal to 5 ninths K2. Do you see that? This one's a little bit tricky. Can I let K2 equal zero? No, because then both K1 and K3 would all be zero as well. And you can't have them all be zero, okay? Do I have fractions? So I am gonna have to let this K2 equal a value that will get rid of all the fractions. What value is that? What number will get rid of all the fractions? If I multiply this guy by 5, will it make that fraction go away? Nope. Yes, common denominator, right? So let K2 equal the common denominator from both because then it'll get rid of both of the fractions, right, with one number. So that K2 equal 45. Then that means that K1 will be 1 fifth times 45, which is 9. And K3 will be 5 ninths times 45, which is 5 times 5, or 25. So then what will capital K1 be, the vector?
Mm-hmm. Got to put them in order, right? K1 has to go at the top. K2 has to go in the middle. And then finally, K3 has to go at the bottom. Now, as long as you're following that strategy with try to do zero, then try to get rid of the fractions, and then try to use one, right? You will get the same answers. I did this problem, and I kept solving this until I could get all the ones and zeros that I could, and then I turned into this. Notice that I, here I had 925, 925ths times K3, and here I had 9 fifths times K3. So I ended up letting K3 equal the common denominator between those two, which was 25. So then I still got the same, the same thing. Didn't I get 9, 45, 25, right? So you don't have to continue the matrix part. You can just plug it in, solve for them, and then pick whatever you wanted to pick. I think I like it better than solving the matrix, just going straight to the cave. It seems a little bit shorter than what I was doing before. Okay. So then now we got, oh gosh, we got two more, right? <laughs> so let's go to the next one. For lambda equal to negative four. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to flip my paper over here because I need to see it. I'm going back to this and I'm plugging in a negative 4 in there. So what's 5 minus a negative 4? It's actually 5 plus 4, isn't it? So I'm going to have 9 here. These guys are going to all stay the same. What about here? If I do negative 5 minus negative 4, what is negative 5 plus 4? Negative 1. And then what if I plug in negative negative 4? It's just going to give me 4. And so this is the matrix I have to solve. You just plug in the lambda you're using and then put a bunch of zeros on the other side, right? That's all that's happening over here. And then we gotta solve it. So I don't have a one, so I'm just gonna go straight into multiplying by one ninth. And then this has already got the zero where it's supposed to go, so I'm gonna try to get that one to be a zero, okay? So I need negative 5 times row 1 plus row 3 to get my new row 3. So I get 0, I get negative 4 ninths, 4, and 0. So who's next? I've got the first column the way I want, and I don't have all zeros yet. Who should I be trying to fix next? Mm -hmm. And you can only multiply, right, to change things to one. What would I multiply it by? Mm -hmm. And that would make it a positive one, right? And so then from here, you would use that one to make what's above it and what's below it a zero. Which one do you want to do first? Do you want to do the one ninth or the four ninths? It doesn't matter. Gonna have to do both of them, right? Maybe not. If you do the bottom one and you get a bunch of zeros, do you really have to do the top one? No, right? Mm 
<laughs> so let's go see. <laughs> so positive 4 ninths times row 2 plus row 3 to get my new row 3. And if I get a bunch of zeros, I don't have to go fix the 1 ninth. I could just go into the Ks. So let's see. So if I multiply 4 ninths times all of these, I'm going to get 0, 4 ninths, negative 4, and 0. And then I do get all the zeros. So then I don't have to worry about um, getting rid of the 1 ninth on the top. So we're going to go straight into the variables. So k1 minus 1 ninth k2 equal to 0. k2 minus 9 k3 equal to 0. So the top one I can move the fraction over and I will get positive 1 ninth k2. Since this one is in terms of k2 I want to get k3 with k2 on the right hand side as well. But in order to do that, I'm going to have negative 9k3 equal to negative k2. And then that means k3 would equal positive 1 ninth k2, right? If I divide negative 1 by negative 9, I'll get a positive 1 ninth. So can I let k2 equal 0? No, because 0 here will make that guy 0, and then 0 there will also make this guy 0. Do I have fractions I need to get rid of, though? I do. And luckily, they're the same denominator, right? So I don't even have to worry about common denominator. So we're going to let k2 equal 9. Then that means k1 equals 1. And k3 also happens to equal 1. Which means my second capital K is going to be 1, 9, 1. And that's for lambda equal to negative 4. And then finally the last one. We have to do for lambda equal to 4. So again, I'm going to go back to the this one here and plug in 4. So 5 minus 4 is 1. Negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9. And then negative 4 is just negative 4. So this becomes my new matrix to solve. You will be given this on the test in case you forget the procedure, okay? You won't have an example, of course, but you will be told this is how you find the eigenvalues, right? And then this solving this is how you find the vectors, okay? And then the formulas from chapter 10 that I told you about, those will also be on there. So you'll know what to do with your lambdas and your k's when you're done. Okay. This guy's good, this guy's good, this guy needs to be a zero. So I'm gonna do negative five row one plus row three to get that zero in row three. So negative five, five, zero, zero. So then I get So then the next step is to make that guy a 1. So I'm going to multiply by negative 1 ninth. Negative 1 ninth 
Then I need to get this guy to be a zero. So negative four row two plus row three. So I get zero, zero, what is that? Oh yes, you're right. It's nine times one ninth, right? <laughs> so this is supposed to be a negative one, which means this would then be a positive four. There we go. Oh, then that's nice, because then we get all our zeros. Good, good, good. So then we can go straight into our k's. k1 minus k2 equals zero, and k2 minus k3 equals zero, and then the bottom doesn't tell me anything. So if I move the k2 over, I get k1 equals k2. Doesn't matter which one I move over, eventually you're gonna get k3 equal to k2 also, right? So whether I move the k3 over or I move over the k2, it becomes negative, and then I divide by the negative, it's going to turn back to positive. So can I let k2 be 0 then? No, because it would make them all 0, right? Can you let k2, oh, there's no fractions, right? So I don't have to worry about that. So then what should I let k2 equal? 1, which means that k1 and k3 are also going to equal 1. So that means capital K3 is just going to be 1, 1, 1. And so we found all three lambdas and all three of their eigenvectors that go with them. There's one more case that you can see. And this is the weirdest one out of all of them, okay? So we don't have, I mean, we have a lot of time. We don't have that much more that we need to do. Um, I have one more three by three matrix. Do you want to take a break or do you want to just keep going? Anybody have an opinion one way or the other? <laughs> do you want to just keep going? Yes, okay. Okay, so the last one, I'm going to do the same thing. It's just gonna be really, really weird because all of these problems, if you notice, once we got down to the Ks, we were able to get both K1 and K3 in terms of K2, right? So what ended up happening was that only K2 was the arbitrary guy. Only K2 was the guy that I let be some random thing, right? Well, maybe not so random so that I can match the book, right? But it was K2 that I was saying, oh, well, let it be this, and let it be that, and let it be this, right? <coughs> what happens if you get in a position where two things are arbitrary, okay? One, what does that look like? And then two, what do I do, right? So we need to see an example of one of those. Because it does happen, and it, like, blew my mind the first time I saw it. I was like, how are they getting two vectors from this thing? I don't get it. And so then I figured it out eventually okay so let's see one that happens like that I think I'm on example five now right yeah so since I'm really trying to get to a certain point there are a lot of zeros in this thing just to kind of lessen the damage <laughs> that we have to go through to get through this one okay so I'm going to do the same thing, my determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero. So I'm going to say four, nope, zero minus lambda is what? Just minus lambda, right? Those guys stay the same. And then negative four minus lambda, these 
guys all stay the same. And then negative 2 minus lambda. And it is going to equal 0, but I'm going to leave some space so that I can rewrite the first two rows because that's just how I like to do determinants. There's another way. You can Google it. I don't like it. It's just longer. Like a lot longer. And a lot of like, we'll cross these out and write this down and cross these out and write. It's just too much. <laughs> I don't like it. So let's see. Let's go this diagonal first, the positive diagonal. We get negative lambda, all of these guys, because nobody is zero. Then when we do this one, we do get a zero. And then when we do this diagonal, we do get a zero. Now the other way. Not enough, not enough. Here we go with three. We get a zero. Here we go with three. We get a zero. Oh dang, I thought I was gonna get all zeros. We have negative four and then negative two minus lambda. Now, this is all zero, so just pretend it's all gone. Don't these two things have something in common? These two terms? They do, right? They both have a negative two minus lambda, which means I can factor that negative two minus lambda out. If I factor it out from here, I'm still left with negative lambda times negative 4 minus lambda. <coughs> if I factor it out over here, I'm left with the positive 4 because of the double negative. Okay? And then if I manipulate what's inside that bracket there, I get 4 lambda plus lambda squared plus 4. And can you factor that? Two and two, right? Guess what? This is also two plus lambda. So how many of them do you have? It's actually lambda plus two cubed with the negative one in front. Oh, I can't see anything that I'm doing, sorry. So, factored that guy out, you saw that. Distribute this, you get four lambda, positive lambda squared, and your plus four comes down. I rearranged them in order, factored this guy, right? But these, there's one in here too. If I factor out that negative, because both are negative, this will become positive and this will become positive. And that's the same thing as lambda plus two. Two plus lambda, lambda plus two, it's the same, right? So there's actually three of them all together with that little negative one in front, okay? So you only get one lambda. You get lambda equal to negative two, but it is repeated three times, okay? Now again, right now we don't care if it's repeated or how many times it's repeated. We don't care about that right now. All I know is, yeah, I got one lambda, I only have to find one K, right? <laughs> and that's it. However, there is more than one K here. And that's what's gonna get really weird. Okay, so let's go to the second part. So for lambda equal to negative two, we're going to do the matrix part. So I'm gonna go back up to this and I'm plugging in a negative two, okay? So what is a negative of a negative two? I'm gonna end up with a positive two, right? The four will stay the four, the zero will stay the zero. The negative one will stay a negative one. What is negative four minus a negative two? That's the same as saying negative four plus two. I'll get negative two. The zero stays, the zero stays, the zero stays. Negative two minus negative two is the same as saying negative two plus two, which is what? Zero. I don't even need to solve anything then, right? That's nice. I just go straight into the case. 
So the first one's going to tell me 2K1 plus 4K2 equals 0. The second one tells me um, negative K1 minus 2K2 equals 0. Notice I know nothing about K3. Like absolutely nothing, right? If I don't know anything about K3, that means K3 is one of those guys that I can say, let it be this or let it be that, right? It could be whatever, okay? However, you also are going to have to do the same thing for K2 then, aren't you? Because K2 is going to be the arbitrary guy. Hopefully these have the same relationship, otherwise something is severely wrong. <laughs> but let's see. 2K1 equal to negative 4K2, which will eventually mean K1 equals negative 2K2, right? Make sure that the bottom one has the exact same relationship. So negative K1 equal to positive. And then if I divide by the negative, I get the exact same relationship, right? It should be the same. You can't have two different relationships, okay? However, K3 is arbitrary. So I've got two variables that can be arbitrary. Now, can you let them both be zero? If I were to let both of them be zero, wouldn't everybody be zero? Right? However, I could let one guy be zero, and because there's no fractions, the other guy could be one. But I could also reverse that, couldn't I? So that's why with this relationship, this kind of situation here, where you know nothing about K3, and you have this specific relationship between K1 and K2, you could actually get two eigenvectors from this, okay? The first eigenvector is as if I let um, K2 equal to zero, and then K3 would be the one. Then that means that K1 would also be zero, wouldn't it? Because if I take zero times negative two, I'm gonna get that K1 is also zero. So I've got one eigenvector there, zero, zero, one. However, what if I swap that? What if I let K2 equal one and K3 equal zero? Then what is K1 in this case? If K2 is one, what is gonna be K1? What happens when I multiply this by one? I get negative two. So that means the second one I could get is negative two, one, and zero. And you're gonna notice in the back of the book, if you have a problem like this, it's gonna say for lambda equal to negative two, you could have both of these. Really, there's three lambdas, aren't there? So I could have a third one. What do you think it would be? You let one of the guys equal zero. Could I let nobody equal zero? What if I had let both of them be one, right? Then I would have gotten, what, negative two, one, and one? And that would have been a third, the third, okay? Your book doesn't have the third one for some reason. I have no idea why. They always go with try to use zero, and if you can, do that. <laughs> and so they let the two zeros, and then they just stop there. Okay, but there is a third one, and there should be because you had three roots, right? Okay. That's it for this whole section on all the different situations. I'm going to stop this here, but I'm just going to read.